Hello, welcome to Levant TV headlines. The CN government forces are engaged in heavy exchanges of gunfire with foreign sponsored militants in Jisr al as they are set to liberate the strategic northwestern city from Takfiri terrorists. Turkish officials have confirmed that a 20 year old Turkish man carried out the suicide bombing in the mainly Kurdish town of Suruç near the border with Syria that killed 32 people following DNA testing. Car bomb attacks in Baghdad and the Iraqi province of Diyala, mostly claimed by the Islamic State Jihadist group, have killed at least 30 people. And one of Egypt's most wanted men, Hisham al Ashmawi, a former special forces officer turned Islamist militant commander, has condemned President Abdel Fattah Sisi and called for a holy war against his government. And US uh, Secretary of State John Kerry will seek to reassure Gulf Arab officials at a meeting in Qatar soon that Washington will work with them to push back against Iranian influence in the region. And now let's have a look at the top Middle East headlines. Starting in the UAE, the Khalish Times newspaper leads with coverage on the funeral of 35-year-old Emirati non-commissioned officer Saif Yusuf Ahmed Al-Fasali, who lost his life in the ongoing Yemen war. The paper also reports that a Lufthansa plane approaching Warsaw's international airport nearly collided with what appeared to be a drone, the first ever such incident for the German airline. From Beirut, the Daily Star leads reporting that the Progressive Socialist Party leader Walid Jumblat said it was up to Iran to facilitate the stalled Lebanese presidential election during French Foreign Minister Roland Fabius' upcoming visit to Tehran. The paper also reports that the family of uh, Saib Ta'in Fayyad denied that he was involved in the abduction of five Czech nationals who went missing over the weekend in mysterious circumstances. The Egypt Independent leads reporting that an official government source has described the Egypt dozens detained secretly report issued on Monday by Human Rights Watch as a series of lies circulated by the organization. The paper also reports that the board of the Egyptian Sudanese Agricultural Integration Company is scheduled to meet in the Sudanese capital Khartoum on Thursday on Saturday to discuss the possibility of increasing the 20,000 acres it is cultivating in the Damazine area of the Blue Nile region to 100,000 acres. And now the newspapers here in London. The Telegraph is reporting that a World Food Programme ship carrying badly needed aid arrived in Yemen's war-torn southern city of Aden on Tuesday, the first vessel chartered by the United Nations Agency to be able to berth there since Saudi-led airstrikes on Shia rebels in the country began in March. The Guardian is reporting that the Pentagon spokesperson Captain Jeff Davis said a U.S. airstrike in Syria has killed a key figure in an Al-Qaeda offshoot. Mohsen Al-Fadli was killed on the 8th of July while in a vehicle near Sarmada in Syria, but Davis did not elaborate on whether Al-Fadli was killed by a drone or a piloted aircraft. The Independent leads with a report that a satirical website has accidentally broken a real news story by revealing that America offered Israel a nice big shipment of weapons to try and solve its anger of the Iran nuclear deal. A spoof news story on The Onion headlined US soothers upset Netanyahu with shipment of ballistic missiles appeared 24 hours before reports emerged that this had actually happened in real life. Now let's have a look at the top Middle East headlines in international tapers. From Beijing, the Global Times reports that a Palestinian was shot dead early on Wednesday in clashes between Israeli soldiers and Palestinian young men north of the West Bank city of Jenin. Mohammed Aloni, a 21-year-old young man, died shortly after being shot by gunfire during the clashes with the Israeli soldiers, according to Khalil Salman Hospital in the city. And finally, from the US, the Los Angeles Times reports that President Obama defended his pursuit of negotiated solution to limit Iran's nuclear program against critics who he claimed would prefer to rush the US back to war, arguing Tuesday that engaging in smart principal diplomacy was the true test of American leadership. That's it for today's newspaper headlines. For more updates, please visit levant.tv. Thanks for watching Press Review. Be sure to join us again tomorrow and bye for now.